The climate emergency plan was approved by council. Um, last month, council approved the five-year climate emergency action plan, which contains 19 actions and sets Vancouver on path to achieve the target of reducing Vancouver's par carbon pollution by 50% by 2030. As you can see, it contains a number of big moves aimed at reducing carbon pollution uh, from the city's largest sources, buildings and transportation. They represent nearly all of the carbon pollution uh, produced in Vancouver, the city says. Currently, 54% of our carbon pollution comes from burning natural gas used to heat space and water in our buildings, and 39% of our emissions come from burning gasoline and di di diesel in our ve vehicles. Uh, the, the plan includes what the city calls game changer actions. These include things like transport, pricing, expanding residential on-street parking programs citywide, a carbon surcharge, a tra uh, transitioning older buildings off fossil fuels by improving energy efficiency and setting requirements for low carbon construction materials and practices. Protesters supporting the Black Lives Matter movement blocked the Georgia Viaduct to motor vehicle traffic for several days in June. The demonstrations were supported by Vancouver's Black Lives Matter chapter. Organizers say the location was chosen to honor Hogan's Alley, a black community in Vancouver's Strathcona neighborhood that was raised when the city constructed the viaducts. While the, while the protesters reflected sentiments shared by thousands of demonstrators around the world, the Vancouver blockade had more immediate and local goals. With the viaduct scheduled to be dismantled within the next few years, the Hogan's Alley Society has been in negotiations with the city to turn this land into a land trust to be stewarded by the black community. Places for People strategy was approved by council in June after a multi-year process. We believe it is a milestone contender for this year for its impact downtown and citywide. The strategy fills a gap, a policy gap in the downtown peninsula, which lacked a public place, a public space inventory and plan. It establishes a framework for holistic public space network, as well as initiatives and capital investment over the next 30 years. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown that the public spaces are important to the, the livability of our neighborhoods. Council has directed staff to apply the principles of the strategy to recovery initiatives. Furthermore, expanding its impact beyond downtown, Council has directed staff to adapt the strategy's six directions for input into citywide policies, including Vancouver plan and community and area, and community and area plans. The city's first uh, emergency shelter for sex workers was approved by council in September and will open soon. It is meant to offer street-based sex workers a safe, warm place to sleep 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 340 Alexander in the downtown east side. The shelter will be run by Wish Drop-In Center Society and will provide beds for 23 self-identifying sex workers, cis, trans, and two-spirit folks, plus hot showers, laundry, and meals. Some of the beds uh, will be short-term respite spaces, but most will be longer-term beds um, for people waiting for permanent housing solutions. Um, Wish uh, has um, has run a shelter exclusive, or w Wish said um, a, a shelter exclusively for sex workers has been needed for quite some time, but COVID has 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 exacerbated uh, existing crises of poverty, homelessness, and a poisoned drug supply. The shelter may also be the first in Canada. The COVID-19 pandemic led to an acceleration of plans to bring many of the city's services and council and advisory board meetings online, as well as engagement. Council began meeting electronically in March, and in April, the city expanded virtual access to council meetings and public hearings and enhanced public involvement. This allowed residents to submit written audio or video comments on agenda items online. A new phone-in option for people wanting to speak at council meetings or public hearings also became available. In May, the city shifted from a paper-based system of development and permit, applic permit processes to what it calls a digital ecosystem where people can apply, meet, and participate from anywhere. Virtual public hearings and virtual urban design panel meetings also began in May, and, er and development permit board and other advisory committees and boards came online later. In June, the city launched virtual open houses on proposed rezoning applications through a new digital engagement platform called Shape Your City Vancouver, 
shapeyourcity.ca. The site includes feedback forums and planning programs, including the Vancouver plan updates and other items. Public space reallocation includes programs such as Vancouver's temporary expedited patio program and alcohol consumption in public spaces pilot, as well as Vancouver Park Board's vote to allow drinking in 22 public parks and alcohol sale and nearby concessions. They were launched in response to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic to support business recovery and to facilitate social connectivity. It is worthy of our consideration because these programs, while temporary, demonstrate the potential for longer term transformation of the city's public realm. These programs redefine permissible activities in public spaces and the privatization of public spaces and opens for discussion the broader consideration uh, the broader considerations of balancing public and private interests and equity. On May 22nd, uh, 2020, City Council introduced several efforts to help residents and businesses adapt to the new reality of living and operating through a pandemic. These included 50 kilometers of slow streets, 12 of which had already been installed. Staff were asked to accelerate the repurposing of road space in neighborhoods across the city to give people room to move, carry out daily tasks, support business access, and connect with others while maintaining physical distancing. Over the next months, new slow streets were put in place with temporary signage and barriers. The slow streets initiatives have occurred across Canada and the United States as a response to the pressures of the pandemic and the need for more outdoor space for residents staying at home and spending time outside for exercise by walking and cycling. These initiatives were facilitated by the reduction in vehicular traffic due to COVID-19. Although Vancouver was not an early adopter of this strategy, the city moved quickly to affect the use patterns of a number of streets. The significance of the Slow Streets program as a milestone will be demonstrated over the next years as experience is monitored and if it leads to permanent shifts in the balance of street space allocated for pedestrians and cyclists. Beach Avenue is currently being studied for redevelopment and could be an early example of these change priorities.